Hey guys, it's Matt. A quick note, I don't usually put out a video on Monday. Many of you may have missed it. It's more of a fun, it's like not no travel tours. Uh, this guy hitchhikes around Siberia, stays in these abandoned burnout buildings. It's also a little bit of not milk free zone, a little bit of fun seeing Siberia. Uh, this guy Vagabond has some great images. So if you missed it yesterday, check it out. I'm almost done proofing the book. Uh, but it's it's been very slow. I'm months behind. It's the first proof. I'll probably start sending out the PDF just because I don't want to hold it here any longer. I want it out, you know, at least distributed out a little bit. Uh, even though it's going to be very rough, there's going to be a lot of spelling mistakes. So I'll, I'll probably tell you uh, when that first draft is available, if anybody wants to just grab it. I, I feel more comfortable. I have it on three different thumb drives here, and I rotate the thumb drives. I just feel more comfortable if it's, you know, with 100 or 200 of you as I continue to proof it, just in case, you know, something happens here where I lose the thumb drives. I lose basically five years of work. I, I need to get it out to a few of you. I'll do that as soon as possible, but it'll be very rough. Of course, there's no charge or anything. I'm not going to charge anything for this book. And Amazon will, if I send it to Amazon, they'll probably send me back saying, we own it now. I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, no. So this is like the old days today. I'm reading a segment of the book I just proofed. Of course, it's, it's different. I've added some sections and I blended a section about the Mandela effect, helping to prove that time doesn't exist. I know many of you don't see the Mandela effect. I know many of you are open to the people that get triggered. We probably lost here a long time ago, but we, we all agree uh, for the most part that time does not exist. It's just a, a sensory perception that is necessary here to live out an incarnation. But the Mandela effect actually helps prove, it's more proof, that time does not exist. So the, that's the first part, and I'll work into the proof on the back end. I'm going to read the section now. What is time? Time does not exist. Time is simply a byproduct of sensory perception as interpreted by a spiritual being living inside a carbon-based body. Time likely does not exist outside of this earth construct or exist outside of any physical or 3D construct. And of course, time does not exist on its own as a thing in and of itself. To have an experience in a 3D physical realm, the game board needs to provide a way for our senses and conscious perception to process events and put them in order, a way to make memories. For material things to exist and move around, a reality needs something to facilitate measurement, movement, and that is time. Without it, one cannot live a life. Going from an infant to an 80-year-old woman in an instant isn't very conducive to carrying out an incarnation and learning something along the way. Move your hand from your knee, say, up to your chin. That simple gesture is impossible without time to measure the movement via what is called speed. This is why the concept of slash time space is always linked, whether it be from Star Trek or from Einstein. Gravity, which also can't be explained by modern science, is very similar. Their mumbo jumbo about gravity and large bodies attract and small bodies are attracted by the large bodies. It works in their modeling so they can predict their bullshit, but they have no idea what's going on. It's likely all moments in this reality are stacked on top of each other and exist at once if viewed from outside of here, looking into our snow globe. What differentiates one time in history from another is your observation needle of consciousness and where it's dropped on the black vinyl record of time in this example. A vinyl, say, Elvis record contains all the music. It's all laid down there next to each other, one song next to the other. What song plays through the stereo and through the speakers is dictated by where the needle drops on the record. Using a black vinyl record as an example here, where all the songs are laid down and fixed, and if you listen to the song the thousandth time, it'll sound the same as the first, that's not implying here that I believe we have no free will. We'll talk about free will some other time. Many people that are very much into astrology believe that the course of your life is charted by the stars, or certain things may come your way, or certain hurdles have to be overcome, but how you operate day to day or week to week is your own choice. So it can be a hybrid as well. We'll talk about it some other time. Don't want anybody just to jump to the conclusion that I'm using a record example so everything is fixed. I don't believe it is fixed. I do believe we have free will. Continuing with the vinyl record example, 
What if your higher self could drop several needles on the record all at once and hear all the songs playing at the same time? Each record needle here represents potentially an incarnation. Of course, each individual record needle, you, is ignorant of the other needles and thinks it's the only song playing at any one particular time. The Civil War seems like a long time ago to us. To someone outside of this reality, though, all moments may likely be stacked on top of each other. The Civil War then is all around you. The Civil War is on top of you. You just can't interpret that because the senses here are very limiting. They're very limiting for a reason, for a purpose. Without that, we couldn't have this sort of experience. Your needle of perception is playing another song, different from the time period of the Civil War, yet potentially both needles are playing at once. This was a brief theme presented in the time travel movie with Anthony Mackie called Synchronic. By the way, and I've mentioned this before, I had written about the vinyl record analogy of time many years before in the fiction book Quantum of Conscience, before it was used in that scene from the movie Synchronic. It seems like there's a massive distance, and that distance is time separating you from, say, a Civil War general, because both of your record needles of conscious observation have been placed on different parts of the record. And you, relative, relative to the Civil War general, is far away, as he is relatively far away from you, from each looking at each other, if that was possible. But it's not far away, potentially, from anybody outside of this construct or from your higher self. Seeing the concept of time in this way makes it much easier to accept things like retrocausality where a massive event like the 7-Eleven job application submitted in September has an effect actually on the past as well as the future. All the grooves on the vinyl record are connected and share one channel for the needle or needles. It's all but proven by even mainstream science the now can affect the past through things like the double slit eraser experiment. It's the limitation of this body that we're in, the senses, forced to rely only on these senses to gather up information and ignore the 99% that we can't get that make us biased to what time is and the need for it to only flow in one direction. So time is nothing more to me than a template of sorts or a set of rules by which the senses of the body obey. Why? So a material-based life can be experienced. The heavenly bodies, planets, etc., and the astrology is essential in allowing this process to unfold down here on earth, as above, so below, like crystals in a quartz watch, oscillating, for example. The planets do, I think, what the job of crystals do in a quartz watch. To allow for time is the purpose of the heavenly bodies. These are nothing that Matt Damon can land on with his tuna can and then grow poop potatoes on. Part 2. The Mandela Effect tells us about time. Yes, as you know, I'm very Mandela affected. I have at least five anchor effects that I'm 100% sure represent what I can only say is a change to my reality. Notice I did not say a change to your reality. We are experiencing different things. We'll talk about that. I hate to keep saying it this way. Some other time. We have to say a change because we don't have the proper words for something so amazing. There really is no change or date of change. What exists now ripples back through time and always has been and has always existed. So, of course, if a Mandela-affected person says something about reality or remembers a change, they are always literally wrong from this reality's perspective. It, of course, never existed, yet to me and others... We believe it did. If that is the case, how can Mandela-affected people just know something was different when it's never, in literal fact, been different in the past? It may be through our connection to higher self, and that aspect of ourselves, perhaps, transcends all dimensions and things called timelines, if separate ones exist. I assure you the Mandela effect is not a psyop, like the first grade truthers scream out in the night. They'll tell me, Mac, Mac. It's a psyop. I can't believe you're falling for it. Nope. It's very real. It's okay if you're not affected or can't experience it yourself. 
That does not mean you're greater or lesser or anything at all. We all bring something different to the table, and this is a joint and collective effort to find the highest truths of this place. In Mandela Effect conversations, we talk about retroactive or retrocausal changes. And to us, it seems like these changes have rippled back through time because we know something existed, now it does not exist. So to us, there just had to be a time or a date of change. And then that change from our perception had to have moved back through time. How else are you supposed to talk about it? Nope. This is simply a limitation of the senses and the logical brain. It just can't be processed any other way. We are very limited here. Nothing can move backward in time. The phenomenon, what we're talking about here, actually proves that there is no time. If you're Mandela affected, it proves there is no such thing as time. And everything is happening at once. In a way, it also proves there's no past as we know it. But we'll talk about that some other time. It only appears that a change goes back through time because that is the only way we can process it. Like I said, it's not really happening that way. In this way, even scientific experiments like the double slit eraser experiment proves there's no such thing as time. I have no idea if the scientists have ever written about that or not. I'm not going to dive into their boring ass white papers either. This is uh, in the the experiment, double slit eraser. It's whereby quantum particles, I don't know much about it, quantum particles have been observed to have changed in the past after something happens a few steps further down the line. How this can be measured or quantified, I have no idea. But on a scientific scale and basis, it's no different than people that are Mandela affected. Same thing. Interview with a vampire, quantum particle in a lab somewhere at the University of Michigan, same thing. I have no idea, again, how they measure this or, or what the white paper would say, but I really don't care. It's just been accepted uh, at the university level uh, that the eraser experiment proves uh, the past can change based on something that happens further down the line. I guess this has been proven for 30 or 40 years now. To me, it's no different than the Mandela effect. So back to the record player example, all, quote, consciousness needles on the record play at once. The vinyl groove on the record is all one groove and connects all songs along the same groove. So in a way, the consciousness of each incarnation is connected if you believe in the concept of incarnations or multiple incarnations of higher self happening at once. Didn't mean to just imply your consciousness is connected to the checkout person that's checking you out now. Uh, We talked about Tony's concepts and others regarding simultaneous incarnations of higher self all happening at once from the perspective of higher self, but different needles playing on the record. And it's you and a Civil War general, both from your higher self, but you think there's this giant distance between you two. So even if you don't believe in higher self and, and that theory, it's still certainly possible that the separation, the time or the perceived time separation between you and the Civil War general is only perceived and not real at all. If you're Mandela affected, that clearly demonstrates that there is no such thing as time. But at the same time, it shows us, if you're Mandela affected, that nothing is physical. Remember, this reality relies on the need to have real spirits believe in in their physical experience, believe in this place, and even more than that, to define themselves by their place in the physical world. Therefore, regarding the Mandela effect, the not milk system loves discussions of like trivial things like movie lines with pedestrian explanations and physical explanations from people trying to figure all this madness out. Like there's a time traveler that went back and changed the title of Anne Rice's book. The not Nook loves that sort of limited thinking. A time traveler causing what we know of as the Mandela effect is absurd, but many Mandela effect people still float that as being possible. Uh, When Australia has moved, or say some people say the human heart is in a different location, things like that uh, can't be a time traveler. Any sort of change like this not only proves time does not exist, but that there is nothing really physical about this place at all. 
Now, there are other ways, of course, to demonstrate both of those, even if you're not Mandela affected. If you're not Mandela affected, you're not just forced and confined into believing that time exists and this place is entirely physical. There's a lot of other things that prove fake world. Part three, regarding the Mandela effect, are the creeps causing it? Yes and no. To me, we live in a fluid reality that changes, even daily perhaps. I think, or I believe, that 99.99% of these, quote, changes, uh, we don't ever notice. They just happen. We just go along with the, quote, change, like what exists today always has been. Because, per this reality, it always has been. If the sky was red yesterday, today we look up, see it is blue, and we think it has always been blue. It could have been red yesterday. I think this is how the Mandela effect works, and this is how generally this reality works. The Mandela effect is just a little window into how the general reality works, in my opinion. So, yes, it's always been blue in one, in a literal sense, but potentially red yesterday, if that makes any sense, the sky. I believe these, quote, perceived changes are, in fact, very common, but I have no basis other than a gut feeling for believing that. Of course, nothing like this can be measured. But as we know it works, there, or the Mandela effect demonstrates there never was a change because the past will reflect what currently exists, of course, even if the sky was red yesterday if that makes any sense. Stated in a different way than what has already been presented here, could say, if the past changed, then the past itself is not what we think it is. This new perception starts with the first uh, cornerstone of there is no time. You have to stop thinking about time as being real. How many times in general have we heard this as potentially a stuffed Lenin? You know, people yelling out, I have no time to do this, or there's no time left on the clock. The repetition of I have no time or there's no time. Um, a truth drop, maybe. For some reason, around 2016, a few million people started to see hundreds of these so-called changes. They, again, they've probably always been here, but for some reason, we can all of a sudden start to see them. From judge not lest ye be judged, now it's judge not lest ye be not judged, and then it changed again. I think the lest is gone, no longer like we remember it in the KJV, to interview with the vampire, a vampire, etc. Now, I don't think we'll ever know why some of us see these amazing changes in reality and others don't. But I will say that the, the ones that even can be perceived by, quote, Mandela-affected people, I still don't think we're seeing 99% of the changes that are taking place, but that's just my opinion. But w w in terms of what we're talking about here, the main point, I don't think the creeps intentionally caused the Mandela effect. I see it more like a, a side effect. Like the loose, e the loose eating role players in this place, I don't think are that powerful to change the location of Australia or the Fruit Loops box. I think it's some sort of weird side effect. I think it's possible that, that the creeps, by overstepping or dabbling where they shouldn't be dabbling with their reality buttons and levers, maybe taking too big of a bite into reality with their technology, doing, using things like CERN, for example. They may have caused it, again, as a side effect down the line, that they weren't even trying to make a certain specific change. Uh, the Fruit Loop box or whatever your Mandela effect may be is unexpected, I believe, to the creeps. So are they causing it? It's yes and no. That's my opinion. If you mess with reality like they do, per the yin and the yang of how this place has to work, uh, we likely will notice something on the other side. I mean, if you mess with the yin, the yang is going to show something, right? The Mandela effect could be a symptom of something that they're playing around with or experimenting with, whatever creepy thing they're trying to do. It may have been completely unanticipated by them, so this is why they send potentially, you know, their Fiona brooms out into the world to manage the situation, to try to tell people what's going on, to try to get people to think in a certain way about it. And again, I'm not saying she's in on it. Uh, millions of people are, are used by the not milk and doing what the not milk wants, uh, thinking they're trying to do their best or, you know, not understanding how they're being used, getting somebody to constantly think about like movie line changes and time travelers, uh, that's getting people to uh, think about the Mandela effect in, in an incorrect way. It's, it's damage control on the back end. If the creeps are overstepping and dabbling into reality over here, 
then the yang has to shift too. And maybe the Mandela effect becomes something some of us can proceed as a side effect. As the AI gets more prominent in this reality, it seems its corresponding symptom is the color magenta bleeding through old videos. Many people in our community will scream that the Mandela effect is a psyop because that's all they can parrot back if they themselves are not Mandela affected. It's closed-minded to proclaim psyop before thinking it through. As we talked about, there are people we know who can see personal auras. There are psychics who can access information beyond the physical. There are people who have traveled in the astral or had out-of-body experiences. There are people who experience light patterns when they hear music. I don't have those experiences myself, but I'm going to be open-minded enough to consider these people really do have these abilities. Or uh, just because I don't have these abilities, I'm going to jump up on a rock like a monkey and proclaim PSYOP. No, I mean, I'm not saying seeing the Mandela effect is an ability, but maybe it's a frequency. Okay. What I'm not going to do is just think those people are lying uh, simply because I don't have those abilities. We're supposed to be the biggest thinkers, the most open-minded in this community. And many of us act no different than those on the ship of fools in this regard. So I think it's pretty clear that there is no time. Time, to me, is the false facade of separation. There likely is no separation between you and the Civil War general. How can there be? If it doesn't exist on its own, how can the separation exist if time doesn't exist? No, Mick, time is not on your knee replacement side. And tell your egregore to stop taking people's energy. I have noted in the past that the Mandela effect, uh, to me, almost always produces an inferior or, or lower new reality. That is a symptom that, for some reason, the Mandela effect community doesn't pay much attention to. Um, I, I've had anybody present a Mandela effect to me that I, I agree with is a change where what exists today is better than what exists in the past. Again, to me, this is a gigantic clue that nobody seems to pay attention to. But anyway, my favorite example of, of inferior new uh, result, of course, you've heard me talk about it, is you're going to need a bigger boat in Jaws. The line makes no sense. There's hundreds of other examples. A rock of Gibraltar that is now attached to Spain makes all of history look ridiculous. It, it just doesn't make sense. History itself doesn't make sense anymore. Puts forth strange circumstances, a rock of Gibraltar that's attached to Spain, if that's an anchor effect for you, and you remember it being kind of in the middle of the Mediterranean Strait or whatever it's called. For example, there's a lot of reasons why it's inferior. The monkeys that are there now, um, they, who act like they're confined to something, they're, they act like they're stranded on an island in the middle of, of the ocean when they could just leave, just, just go up to Spain, just walk across to Spain, because it's attached to Spain. See, I'm saying that the circumstances, the history starts to break down, inferior, new result. If the heart being in a new place is a real ME, it's not an anchor effect for me. It does seem a little strange. I've watched all these movies where you put your hand over, your, over the left side and, you know, in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, the witch doctor tries to suck his heart out of his left side. And why is he doing that if it's in the middle? But I can't say it's an anchor effect. I didn't take no pre-med or anything like that. But so if, it, if that's a change to the body and people that talk about the Mandela effect body changes as being real... I, I'm open to it, of course, I can't speak to it, but I can't say that's a body upgrade. I mean, how do we know? Is there more or less heart-related deaths now? See what I'm saying? So I can't say it's inferior either. I'm just saying nobody's ever pointed out to me one that's clearly better. Uh, regarding the ones that are very personal to me, they all produce a lesser reality. Judge not, lest ye be not judged. That makes no sense. And it is now changed again to judge not that ye be not judged. Uh, that's inferior. I'm sorry. I have hundreds of more examples that can't be listed out here. We don't have the time for. So what do we know about the power structure in quote control here on earth? Does what we call not milk, does it want to make people's lives better with say medical cures and the easing of financial stress and all the good things that it could allow, not bring, just allow people to come up with on their own? No, of course not. It's just the opposite. It's out to destroy everything. And it's another war tomorrow, another drug commercial, and a roll of paper towels that where you get five sheets for $25. It works quite intentionally to destroy. If I believe that time does not exist, 
then all events are stacked on top of one another. I have no other way to talk about it. But if that's the case, they must be interconnected with the past and the future, much more connected with the past and the future, much more related than we can perceive through our senses, where the senses through time create a separation. Now, the creeps understand how this reality works. They understand the reality buttons and levers. I believe that they understand that, quote, causation events, a big event like the big day in September, you know, in something that happens, say, in the present, I think the creeps understand that it affects the past in addition to the future. These things that the creeps know that they'll never share with any mainstream scientist. They know the scientists in many regards are spinning their wheels with research that they know will go nowhere. Therefore, as the creeps gain technological know-how, to, in my opinion, they're not just trying to improve their position now and in the future. They may be attempting to improve their standing in the past. Thus why Biff, you know, in Back to the Future, Biff as Donald Trump, um, gave himself the Sports Almanac book, right? It's quite possible they're attempt attempting to give themselves the proverbial Sports Almanac book in the past, not to gain riches or money, and they don't need that, and print up a trillion dollars a second. As usual, their goal is always the same one sentence, to gain more control over you and the real spiritual beings that are here in attempt to corrupt their incarnation. If they can help themselves in the past and they become, quote, masters of time, then the benefit to themselves in the present or the future could be exponential. Maybe they're dabbling. Maybe this is why some of us can see the Mandela effect. It's just a theory. So the Mandela effect shows us there's no time and all things are linked. As the present day society is degraded, then if everything's linked, so then the past is degraded as well. As above, so below. As of the now, as of the past. I just made that up. Or this may be better. As now, so in the past. Perhaps the current time or the present day time can be exponentially debased if they, the creeps, can begin the process decades ago or begin centuries ago by dabbling with the present to affect the past. Of course, all of this is just a wild guess. But we do all agree, if you're listening to this, that these creeps meddle into absolutely everything. If they're trying to do this with reality buttons and levers, I don't think anybody listening to this would be surprised. They're creeps. Now, this theory may not stand, even if the premise holds that the Mandela effect proves that there's no such thing as time. Is Australia being smushed and smashed up into Papua New Guinea on the map a retroactive reality debasement, as this presentation suggests? It seems so to me, just like the Rock of Gibraltar. For example, the location of Australia to Papua New Guinea makes history now a discombobulated mess in many different areas. The story of the thousands of different endemic species, endemic species on Australia, it now makes no sense. Well, how are there all these species of birds and whatever else, maybe a snake, whatever it may be Australia, that's only on Australia when uh, Papua New Guinea is just 90 miles away. See, all of reality, uh, its story can't support the new reality. It all starts to break down. The history becomes a mess. Even the biology becomes a mess. The darker... Uh, skin tribes, the tribes of Papua New Guinea, with it being so close, they would, have, they would have come to northern Australia a long time ago. They would have either bred with those living in northern Australia, if anywhere they would have, whatever, I don't know if anybody lived in northern Australia at the time, but give me some leeway. Um, you know, they would, have, they would have come down in some way. Uh, the Aboriginal Australians would not look the way they do, or why couldn't the Aboriginal Australians go north? And the Papua New Guinea tribes wouldn't look the way they do. See what I'm saying? It's a further breakdown of history, and it's, this is not a debasement, a reality degradation. The stories of using Australia as a prison now make no sense. When a prisoner could just row a dinghy or put some sort of wooden raft together like Tom Hanks uh, with, his, with his beach ball Wilson in a favorable tide, somehow make it up to P Papua New Guinea and with, with a, a, a piece of, a, I don't know, wood as a paddle. It's just 90 miles away. That's nothing. Is anybody saying that the outer islands, the outer islands of Australia just being 90 miles away, does anybody think that's a long distance? 
that Papua New Guinea is just still a tremendous distance, and it makes sense why there would be all the separation of endemic species and, and tribes, etc., over a thousand years. Is that is anybody trying to make that argument that that could not be ninety miles could not be overcome by primitive people or prisoners? Really, when monarch butterflies. Uh, they travel, and some would say up to almost 3,000 miles, I'll just say over 2,000 miles in their migration. Aren't they a little bit more primitive than people? And they, they do the 2,000 miles, know where they're going. They can make it. The other endemic species then could make it. How about, um, let's say, tribes and indigenous peoples from Tahiti or from that region, they say, uh, a long time ago, somehow found the Hawaiian, Hawaiian Islands. That's over 2,000 miles away. They found these little Hawaiian islands out in the middle of nowhere, 2,000 plus miles away, not 90 miles away. In this example, uh, if anybody's going south from Papua New Guinea, the size of the object to run into south, Australia, it kind of can't be missed. It's, it's, it's kind of big. <laughs> We're trying to find the Hawaiian islands, say, coming from uh, Tahiti or Tonga or whatever. It's like crawling around on your hands and knees trying to find a dime on the floor of a Marco Rubio bubble party. So I suggest that maybe reality has always been very fluid with things you could call changes, and we just don't notice. And that's just the way this reality works for reasons we can't obviously comprehend while we're in the body. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Why would it need to work that way? I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things here that are beyond my comprehension. John Malkovich trying to break with Michelle Pfeiffer. It's beyond my control. We just don't know. You know, it's just the way things are. Okay. As usual, though, the creeps, as usual, here we go again, start, they mess with everything. Why, why do you need particle colliders all over the all over the world? You think it's, oh, Matt, they're trying to determine the origins of the universe and recreate conditions that created the Big Bang. Oh, sure they are. Yeah. Well, isn't that what they're doing at CERN? And why you need the other hundred particle colliders? It's a bunch of horse shit. What they're... Of course, they let regular scientists into the particle colliders, and that's these regular scientists, that's what they think they're doing. That's not what I think particle colliders are for, but we'll leave that for another video. Okay, they're, they're taking bites, big bites of the shit sandwich that they should not be taking, these creeps. Uh, perhaps they've breached their contract, who knows? So we know one thing for sure, you know, the MO of the creeps is to mess and screw with absolutely everything and put their slimy appendages and tentacles in absolutely everything. We all agree. So it's like what I'm saying here about the Mandela effect being a side effect. In the movie Event Horizon with Lawrence Fishburne, they harness the power of a singularity or a black hole as the engine to power the spaceship that could fold time space. Remember that? I love that movie. I really do. There's a line in the movie, something along the lines of, I didn't look it up, but something along the lines of to Dr. Weir, did you think you could defy the laws of reality, to defy the laws of nature and physics? And when you defied it, there wouldn't be a price to pay? See, to me, the Mandela effect here and now, things popping through reality that they didn't anticipate could be that price. Now, I'm well aware that the Mandela Effect community, a large segment, believes just the opposite, that it's God giving us clues, reality itself trying to wake us up. Matt, you yourself have talked about reality as a truck and tractor pull, where over time, there was more and more evidence that we're not in the place here that the scientists say. And I understand. I'm just, I'm, and that's possible too. I'm not taking that off the table. I'm not just digging in saying it has to be a side effect of what the creeps are doing. I'm just saying that's definitely something I don't see how anybody can remove uh, from being on the table. Just because they have their, just think of the particle colliders alone and all the things they try to mess with and dabble with. Franken mosquitoes just can't leave nature alone, or you've got to make a special genetically enhanced mosquitoes to eat the mosquitoes that are harmful. Oh, yeah, they're just looking out for you. Oh, 33 minutes. I better just stall some time to get to the 34. Yeah, let's. Walking the mile, walking the mile. <laughs> okay, I'm over. I'm over 34 now. I can end. I, it's now. It's like it's like when you shut your computer down. You can safely turn your computer off. But it, my my Apple just barks at me if I pull a plug on something or disconnect my camcorder. I mean, but nothing ever happens. It just says it's so dangerous for me to pull the plug. Nothing ever happens. Well, it's, so it's 2024 and I just can't pull plugs out the back. It's going to crash the whole operating system down. I expected that in 1995. Okay, Matt, you're safe now. You can end the video. Thanks for listening.